Welcome to another edition of Zuma Watch. There's been an awful lot happening, as usual, in South Africa, politically, legally, constitutionally. Uh, the race to Midrand, as we're calling it, that's the contest for the next presidency of the ANC, who will succeed Jacob Zuma in December, is really hotting up. And Cyril Ramaphosa finally seems, Lawson, to have got out of his starting blocks, doesn't he? Absolutely. I think he's taken a firm decision now that he can't wait until the formal ANC uh, nomination process opens later this year, that he's got to show that he's, uh, he's willing to run for president. And he launched his campaign effectively at the end of April in the Eastern Cape, launched it with a very strong message that I think really landed well and resonated within the ANC as well. And it's about unity. It's also about cleaning up the ANC. It's a, 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 it's a very firm anti-corruption approach. And talking about corruption not just within South African society, but corruption within the ANC itself, and saying that we need to tackle that in order to preserve the ANC. He's got the support from the left, and the sensible left, as we call it, but also he seems to be dominating the centre ground. That creates a dilemma for Nkosazana Glamini Zuma, doesn't it? Where does she turn with her campaign? Absolutely. She's, you know, her, her, her campaign was always predicated on support from the so-called Premier League grouping, which is the populist nationalists, uh, as we call them, within the ANC. That grouping seems not to be as solid as it once was. So she's in a bit of a, a dilemma at the moment. Where does she go? Uh, does she move further into that uh, populist narrative to try and win support from within that grouping? And is she confident enough to know that that grouping will be, be able to uh, uh, allow her to succeed? And the cry for unity is getting uh, louder and louder. Um, we've seen the ANC incredibly divided. Only on Friday you had the ANC spokesperson, uh, Zizi Kodwa, going on national radio and attacking the ANC Minister for uh, Public Enterprises, Lynn Brown, for reappointing, extraordinarily, mm. Brian Malefi. Absolutely. Once again, shows that the centre is not holding, that ANC uh, ministers are going rogue and, and taking decisions that the ANC is not aware of. And that's something that hasn't happened before. Meanwhile, Zuma is under pressure in the courts yet again, uh, this time around the secret ballot. Uh, and, you know, you've been commentating on this issue. What are the, the key issues that the court has to decide upon? It's, it's finely balanced. I think it's legally a very hard case. Uh, there are respectable, decent arguments on both sides. Uh, much will depend on, I think, uh, how far the court is willing to go in reaching into the rules of Parliament mm -hmm. and requiring Parliament to hold a secret ballot. That was the issue in the court uh, yesterday. And, what, you know, if the court uh, comes to the conclusion that a secret ballot should be uh, used, what impact does that have on Zuma? Well, I think uh, what the Constitution says is that it requires a majority of the House, i.e. 201 uh, members would vote for the no-confidence vote, and that would then mean the end of this government. Zuma would go and his cabinet would go, and a new, elect a new uh, president would have to be elected from the National Assembly. What that means in numbers terms, given that the ANC has 249 uh, members of Parliament is that at least 50, but probably taking into account absences from the opposition and so on, uh, probably at least 60 ANC MPs of those 249 would have to switch sides, and they would only do so in a secret ballot, uh, and there has to be a reasonable chance that would happen. And that obviously is all going to play out over the next few weeks. We don't know how long it's going to take for the court to come out with this judgment. Once it does come out with the judgment, there will be a motion of no confidence in the National Assembly whether it's in a secret ballot or not. And all of this is going to play out, very importantly, in the run-up to the ANC's policy conference at the end of June, beginning of July. So for more information, get in touch with us at the Barton Master Group.